Okay, this question says carbon tetrachloride CCl4 is mixed in 390 grams of benzene to make a solution for supporting an organic chemical reaction in which the mole fraction of benzene is 0.91. Find the molality of the CCl4 solution, right? So, what do you mean by mole fraction? Mole fraction is number of moles upon total number of moles, right? So, if I only have carbon tetrachloride CCl4 plus benzene, right if these are the only two things if one has a mole fraction of 0.91 the other one has a point, mole fraction of 0 0.09 right so number of moles of ccl4 we need to eventually find out the molality of the ccl4 solution right so what is molality molality is number of moles of ccl4 by weight of solvent which is benzene in kg right so if i have when you have this mole fraction as 0.91 for benzene, which means that 0.09 is the mole fraction of CCl4. What we mean is, if I had a one mole mix, right, uh, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, okay, 390 gram benzene is given, so we can do something or the other there. Uh, what is benzene? Benzene is C6H6, right? So uh, what is that? Uh, 72 plus 6 is 78 grams per mole. So when I'm looking at 390, 390, number of moles is what? Weight divided by molar mass, right? So we'll get 390 by 78. 78 into 5 would have been 350 plus 40, which is 390. So this is number of moles of Benzene is given to us as 5, right? So, if I have a uh, number of moles of benzene as uh, 5, can I not use that to find out number of moles of CCl4? So, what is uh, mole fraction? Mole fraction is number of moles upon total number of moles. So, I can say benzene number of moles divided by uh, number of moles of benzene plus number of moles of CCl4 should be equal to 0.91. Right, mole fraction of benzene is 0.91. We don't even need this 0 0.09 as of now. We'll see. Right. So uh, from here, I can see that uh, 5 will be equal to 5 into 0 0.91 would be how much? 5 into 1 minus 0.45. Right. So that is uh, 4.55. Right. 4.55. Yeah, 0 0.91 into 5 is uh, 4.55 plus 0 0.91 times number of moles of CCl4. So from here, I am getting number of moles of CCl4 that I have added to be equal to 0 0.45 divided by 0 0.91. Right. Approximately, this is 1 by 2. You can see 0 0.45 into 2 would have been 0 0.90. This is approximately, you can say, 1 by 2. Right. So approximately half mole of CCl4 is what I have added to 5 moles of benzene such that uh, my uh, uh, mole fraction of benzene turns out to be 0.9 and uh, mole fraction of CCl4 turns out to be 0 0.09. Now, uh, molality is what I want. Molality as I told you was number of moles of CCl4 by weight of solvent benzene in kg. Right. So 390 grams. Uh, is what I had which is 0.39 kilogram right so number of moles of CCl4 was uh, approximately half so 0.5 divided by uh, weight in kg will be 390 by 1000 which is 0 0.39 right so what can I write this is 0 0.39 plus 0 0.11 by 0 0.39 which is going to be how much 1 plus 0 0.11 by 0 0.39 right or 11 by 39 approximately yeah you could have directly done 50 by 39 also up to you right so yeah one point uh, roughly something less than 1.3 is what i'm seeing right so 1.26 directly also you could have just done 50 by 39 1 11 110 uh, 2 would be 78 and then you have what uh, 32 right no 2 uh, yeah 32 so 320 320 would mean somewhere around 6 or 7 or something 7 would uh, not be possible right 7 would be uh, 39 into 7 is 40 into 7 280 minus 7 so 260 half so somewhere around 1.2 something is what i'm getting so yeah, uh, looking at the options at least since there is no none of these, I know that it had to be one point something which is uh, closest to this uh, what is given here. So yeah, our final answer is C option. 
Okay, this question says, which of the following is incorrect statement regarding molecular orbital theory, right? So what is what do we have in molecular orbital theory? We speak about atomic orbitals combining to give you what you call as molecular orbitals. We say that two atomic orbitals from different uh, atoms will combine and give you two new orbitals. One is a bonding molecular orbital and the other is anti-bonding molecular orbital, right? So in MOT, what are the conditions that we have? Let's read one by one and see if one of these is like a wrong statement, right? So yeah, the combining atomic orbitals must overlap to the maximum extent. This is true, right? Of course, we know that they have to overlap and they have to overlap to maximum extent for effective bonding, right? So yeah, this is true. Uh, the combining atomic orbitals must have the same symmetry about molecular axis. This is also true, right? So when we are looking at 2px and 2px, we will be uh, allowing them to overlap. We will not, uh, you know, overlap 1s and 2p, for example, or 2s and 4p or 4d or something like this right so the atomic orbitals having uh, similar symmetry right same symmetry about your molecular axis is what we normally overlap right so this is also true the combining atomic orbitals must have the same or nearly the same energy this is also true right other than the same symmetry uh, what we also say is that um, they should also have somewhat similar energy so that uh, there is effective overlap between them so here we have not seen any wrong statement so far right all three of them are like kind of prerequisites or conditions that we speak about when we speak of a linear combination of atomic orbitals. So yeah, uh, none of these are wrong. Uh, we wanted incorrect. So obviously the correct answer is D where it says that none of the above are wrong. Uh, for the reaction N2 plus 3H2 giving you 2NH3, delta H is equal to so um, you can see delta H delta U relation is what is used here. So we know that delta H is supposed to be equal to delta U plus delta NG RT. What is this delta NG? Number of moles of gaseous products minus number of moles of gaseous reactants. So here what will I get? I am going to get delta U plus. Uh, what is delta NG? I have two moles of gaseous products and if I look at the reactants, I have four moles of gaseous reactants. So delta NG will be equal to products minus reactants, gaseous moles. Everything is in gas phase, right? So this is equal to minus two. So delta U plus delta NG RT will turn out to be equal to minus 2RT, right? Simple question. Uh, obviously, the correct answer is B option. Okay, this question says, for the hypothetical reactions, the equilibrium constant values K, um, equilibrium constant K values are given below. A giving B, K1 is equal to 2, B giving C, K2 equal to 4, C giving D, K3 equal to 3. Now, the equilibrium constant for the reaction A giving D will be Right. Simple question based on the properties of equilibrium constants. What is the property that we need? When we add two chemical reactions, their equilibrium constants multiply. Right. So when you add uh, equation 1 and equation 2 directly, I can say new equilibrium constant will be K1 into K2 like that. Right. So I need this A giving D. Do you see this is like way, uh, I mean the idea is to, uh, you know, like uh, bring out this, top, bring out this, I mean, see to it that you remember this particular law, right? That if you are adding to equilibria, uh, to equilibria, their equilibrium constants will multiply. So if I add these two, first two, I'll see B cancelling out. Then after that, if I add with the equation three, I'll see this C also cancelling out, giving me my net reaction, A giving D, right? So all I want is that... Uh, this let me call this as reaction 4 so this is 1 2 and 3 let's say so i can see that reaction 4 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 which means that uh, equilibrium constant for 4 will be k1 into k2 into k3 right so equilibrium constants individually are given 2 4 and 3 so 8 into 3 is 24 which is going to be the equilibrium constant of the net reaction right so yeah uh, the correct answer is of course option c Okay, this question says the solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt barium sulfate is 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10 at 25 degrees C. What will be the solubility of barium sulfate in presence of 0.02 molar H2SO4? See, H2SO4 is a strong acid. It will dissociate and give us. Uh, assume complete dissociation of H2SO4 is anyways given in the statement. Anyways, we know. 
we can assume dilute H2SO4 to be 100% uh, dissociated, it will give me 2H++ SO4 2 minus. So yeah, one molecule is giving me one SO4 2 minus, which means concentration of H2SO4 is same as concentration of SO4 2 minus. So it is already 0 0.02 molar. Now think about this, barium sulfate is there. It is trying to dissociate and give you Ba2 plus plus SO4 2 minus. If there was only barium sulfate, not this H2SO4, uh, let's say solubility is S, then it would have given S and S, right? I mean, what is solubility? Number of moles that dissolves per liter, right? So S moles, and we assume that these ionic salts, they dissociate to 100% H10. We assume that these are generally strong electrolytes unless and until specifically mentioned in question, right? So yeah, this will dissociate to 100% H10. So S moles per liter dissolved and 1 BaSO4 gives 1 Ba and 1 SO4. So S will give me S and S. So S molar Ba2 plus S molar SO4 2 minus is what I should have had if only barium sulfate is there. But the point here is that I already have 0 0.02 molar of sulfate coming from H2SO4. So I have to write sulfate as plus 0 0.02, right? Now think about this. If only barium sulfate was present, I know that S and S would have been there and KSP would have been S square, which is given to us as 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10, which means in pure water, barium sulfate solubility would have been root of 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 5 molar. Right? So sulfate coming from pure, uh, you know, pure water plus barium sulfate combination would have been 10 to power minus 5 molar. This is a very small value compared to 0 0.02 molar, right? If it was alone, right? 10 to power minus 5 is what I would have got. But think in terms of leach layer. I have added sulfate into the solution right if i add sulfate obviously i have added product reverse reaction will take place so in this case the solubility that i'm going to get in presence of h2so4 is going to be even lower than this 10 to power minus 5 so this s is going to be way lower than 10 to power minus 5 why should i add it to 0 0.02 i mean 0 0.02 is such a huge number compared to 10 to power minus 5 10 to power minus 6 and all so i can say sulfate is approximately 0 0.02 only it's like saying you have 10 lakh rupees and let's say somebody gives you 3 rupees will you say that i have 10 lakh rupees only almost or will you say 10 lakh plus uh, oh, yeah 100003 rupees is what i have you won't say that right so same is the story here this is approximately 0 0.02 molar only so what we can say is okay ks P, which is 1.1 into 10 to power minus 10 should be equal to Ba2 plus into SO4 2 minus. Ba2 plus is S molar but SO4 2 minus is 0 0.02 molar approximately right. So from here I am getting S is equal to uh, 1.1 into 10 to power minus 10 divided by 2 into 10 to power minus 2. So 1.1 divided by 2 is 0.55 right. So 0.55 into 10 to power minus 8 right. Or maybe I can write this as 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 9, right? Now looking at this value in retrospective, going back and looking at our approximation, is this true? Yeah, S is 10 to the power minus 9 and then you are adding 0 0.02, obviously 0 0.02 is the final answer, right? So yeah, solubility I'm getting as 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 9 molar, right? Which is something that I can see here. So our final answer is B option.